ready for class. Welcome back to the Panic Room, everyone, and to another episode of Pax's Little Library of Horrors. All right, so guys, we have not done a cutesy, creepy kids book in a while. I want to say the last one that we did was like the tale of Annabelle Spoon. I wanted to do another one because I came upon this book at the library sale that I went to. You guys might have seen my haul video from there. I didn't show any of the kids books simply because my little library people, you guys get first taste. <laughs> and this one jumped out at me as just a very cute creepy-esque but still very kid-friendly kind of book but the biggest reason that we're doing this episode today is a lot of the artwork. This video is for my people who like Tim Burton, who like Halloween. This is for you. This is perfect for those kind of days, you know, the crispy fall days when you want something to read to your kids at bedtime, you know, something like you know, holiday or seasonally appropriate, you know, this is one of those. It has its creepy little edge to it, but it is still lots of fun. And it actually has, much like the Annabelle Spoon book, a really good message. So we are going to read it today. And it is not in the best condition. Obviously, it was a library sale, but it also was like 50 cents. So <laughs> beggars can't be choosers, right? So this is the Insomniacs. <laughs> now, if you are a fan of things like the Addams Family or the Munsters, I think you're in for a treat. So, and I do want to show you guys some of the artwork because it is just lovely. <laughs> Especially if you like that Tim Burton-esque kind of flavor in your artwork, I really think you're going to enjoy it. So, let's get started. Okay guys, so right on the first page, the title page, you see, I kind of got a very Coraline-y kind of feel, you know? Yeah, I think you guys know what I mean. So, we have The Insomniacs by Karina Wolf. The Insomniacs weren't always a Knight family. But when Mrs. Insomniac found a new job, Mother, Father, and Little Mika traveled 12 time zones to their new home. And just look at this. Look at the use of the darkness, right? And there's Mika. So there's our first little taste of our family. <laughs> but just look at that beautiful beautiful rendition of the dark here. Already you see what I'm talking about, right? About the artwork. When they arrived, they found they stayed awake only in the nighttime. At sunup, they yawned and stretched. They were ready for an eight hour rest. Mother dragged herself to work and nodded at her desk. Father took pictures at his studio and then took 40 winks. Mika listened to her lessons but sleepwalked through the science lab. The headmistress sent her home with a note. I suspect Mika has a sleeping sickness, Please see a specialist right away. This won't do, said little Mika. We have to sleep at night. That evening, the insomniacs took hot baths, filled the crossword, pulled down the shades, and pulled up the covers. Mika counted to a thousand. Father sipped six mugs of milk. Mother tried a meditation, as suggested for her star sign, in the evening paper. But by 3 a.m., they found themselves awake again. Nothing helps, cried little Mika. It's tiresome waking all night long. Let's have a family huddle, said Mother, and they puzzled over their shut-eye trouble. Who rests the longest and the best, said Miss Insomniac. I wonder if our neighbors have better luck with bedtime. We don't have neighbors, said Mika meekly. Not true, said Father. He pointed to the darkness beyond the window pane. Lynx take catnaps. Reindeer stand up. And walrus drowse with one eye open, added Mother. But bears bed down all winter long, said Mika. We'll find the bears and ask them for their slumber secrets. So in search of bears, the insomniacs trekked beyond the house, through the pines, into the cliffs, and found a cave. But there weren't any bears. Instead, they saw a horde of mice hanging upside down. Now look at this. Guys, you know, I am a huge bat lover. I love bats, so I adored this panel. And look, look at the trees. Like, you see, like, the light coming through here? This was gorgeous, too. I really enjoyed that. The cloud of animals roused and rushed into the night. They weren't mice at all. They dipped and dived and surfed the air. They squealed with delight. All right, guys, look. Is that not cute? I love it. Oh, for all of us who are bat lovers, come on. Come on. Is that not pretty? <laughs> and then the insomniacs noticed the darkness was full of life. Why don't we give night a try, said little Mika. 
The insomniacs decided to live during the dark hours. At dusk, they woke and ate a breakfast of nightshade vegetables. They dressed in midnight blue. When the moon rose, Mother tended a moonlight cactus, and Father watched the evening news. Mika wrinkled her nighttime pets. An aardvark, an angel shark, a bandicoot, and a small-eared Zorro frisk in Mika's room. A finnick fox lived under her bed, and she fed him night beetles. Okay, so this is another really good one. I love the stripes, all of the little animals here. Again, kind of harkening back to some Coraline vibes to me. Maybe it's just the little girl, I don't know, but kind of kind of gave me some, some Coraline vibes. The planets wheeled around the sky while the insomniacs toiled in the gloom. Father developed his photos in a darkroom, mother studied stars through her telescope, and Mika attended night school remotely. And after work, they moonbathed and watched the fishes nipping at the surface of the sea. They went to the flower market and to the bakery, where the dough rose with the sun. They returned home on the quiet streets. Now, I really like this panel where it's split into four. Just look at those like purples and golds with the dark blues and blacks. I thought that was really, really pretty. And a good use of color, I thought. They put away their groceries and their flowers. At dawn, they went to sleep. They adored their new life. Every now and then, sunlight crept through the blinds and climbed the walls and reminded the insomniacs of daytime. They opened the door and looked at the sun's glare that bleached the world out there. The dazzle made them blink and sigh and rub their eyes. I much prefer the night, said Mika. And I love this, look how cute. It's the whole family with like sunglasses and shit on. <laughs> and also let's take a moment and look at the colors here. Look how this panel is really like garish, reflecting the idea of the words, you know, how the sun is, you know, too bright for the family now versus this panel, which is kind of soothing, right? So I thought that was an interesting little, little snippet right there. The insomniacs didn't need the sun. They had stars and fireflies and northern lights. We are a nighttime family, they all agreed. They shutted out the morning sky and bundled into bed. So what did you think, guys? I thought the insomniacs was just an absolutely precious story. I think that it had a really good message, you know, kind of like live your own life, your own way. And that there's nothing wrong with that. That just because you do things a little different doesn't mean that you're doing them wrong. So I loved that whole message of this book. And beyond that, I think it had some absolutely beautiful artwork that really played into that love of like the creepy. This was kind of more on the lighter side of our fair, but I think it fits nonetheless, you know? It still embodies that love for the darker side of kids' fiction, you know? Be it mostly in the artwork, but also kind of even in the story itself, you know, this whole idea of being the outcast, of being different, and having that be okay. You know, I think that's that's a wonderful message and one that, you know, kids really need, you know, to to be their own person. You know, that's a that's an important thing to learn. And the earlier you learn it, in my opinion, the better. So guys, thank you for coming back to another episode of Pax's Little Library of Horrors. Please like and subscribe, it would really help me out. And until next time, class dismissed.